Hello and welcome back. Before we get started, I want to call your attention to the intro animation that just played. We recently made that video file available for people to soundtrack, and that brand new soundtrack was created by Cinematic Laboratory. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out Cinematic's YouTube channel. It's full of great synthesizer videos that happen to focus fairly heavily on make noise instruments, and I definitely recommend subscribing. There's a link to the channel in the video description. We'll showcase some other people's soundtracks for this animation in coming weeks as well. And if you missed it, feel free to download the silent video file and soundtrack it yourself. It's also linked in the video description. Now for something we haven't done in a while, a listening exercise. Please let us know what you hear in the comments of this video. At the time of this filming, we have over 400 videos on this YouTube channel. Sometimes when I come up with a patch, I wonder, have I already done this? I searched through our videos and found lots with gates in the title, but none with gated reverb. So let's put together a little gated reverb patch. Gated reverb is most commonly associated with drum sounds in the pop music of the 80s. According to legend, it was first created on a Peter Gabriel recording when an errant hot mic was left up in the mix with both a compressor and a noise gate on the channel. This would make it so that the transient sound of the drum lasted a little bit longer in the recording, but then the tail happened much more suddenly. It makes each drum hit sound as if it takes place in its own space that is starkly separated from successive hits. With a synthesizer, we have fine control over the exact length and shape of the reverb tails that are created in this way. I'm gonna patch this up using dynamic envelopes from the zero control to modulate the mix parameter of the mimeophone on this fun little skiff system. So here is a simple little bass line sequenced by the zero control. Halo is all the way up for maximum reverb. Let's bring it in. Now let's separate each transient into its own space. We'll take the dynamic envelope of the zero control and use it to modulate mix. We can use the strength row on the zero control to set the intensity of the tails. But right now, they're also tied to the individual notes. This is gonna come alive more if we change the length of the tail relative to the clock. Let's do this by clocking the zero control externally. I'll stop the internal clock first, and then patch a steady clock for maths. Now, the strength, speed, and time controls will control the length of the tails even as the clock goes at the same rate. add some further variation by adding modulation to the mimeophone.
have a quick listen for comparison's sake to what this would sound like if we were not modulating the mix control. Let's add another higher voice with this other STO. Bring it in with the zero control. Making sure that interrupt is off if we want the main sequence to continue while we play. We can make it sound related even when tuning by hand by patching the other STO to its sync input. Do a little timbral modulation with the shape input. You don't need this particular set of modules to do this. You can do a similar patch with any function generator and effects module. Program your synth with patch cables. Do you ever use gated reverb in your patches? Do you use techniques like this on effects other than reverb and echo? Let us know in the comments.